approach, method, technique. May kaibahan ba? What method will I use in this approach? Tama ba ang ginamit kong technique in this particular method? If you want to know the answer, then continue watching this video. Hi everyone! Welcome back to this channel. In this video, pag-uusapan natin ang kaibahan ng approach, method, and technique. These words are often used interchangeably. As sa video din na ito, we will learn the philosophies in teaching, the different methods na gagamitin natin na naka-align sa approach, at ano-ano nga ba ang mga technique na dapat natin gamitin sa pagtuturo, especially in this new normal. So let's not waste time and let's discuss first approach. An approach is a theory or even a philosophy of how people learn in general. As a language teacher, this refers to the theory or philosophy that I will use so that my students will learn English language. Theory as defined is a set of principles on which the practice of an activity is based on. We have Chomsky's Universal Grammar Theory, Skinner's Theory of Behaviorism, Locke's Tabula Rasa, and Krashen's Monitor Model. We also have educational learning theories. These are experiential learning theory, social learning theory, humanism learning theory, and transformative learning theory. On the other hand, philosophy refers to the attitudes, beliefs, experiences, and worldview na meron tayo. Our philosophy influences our way of thinking and actions. Our philosophy influences our way of thinking and actions. This philosophy reflects how the course will be taught, the way the classroom will be handled, and how a student will be evaluated. Ni iba sa atin naniniwala na mahalaga pa rin malaman ng mga bata ang mga basic rules ng grammar bago ituro ang iba pang mga bagay. Others have the belief na di na kailangan pang i-discuss ang mga basic grammar rules dapat mga practical lessons na ang ituturo. Within curriculum, a teacher's philosophy impacts how they design and implement the lessons. Teachers who understand learning theories can use different techniques in their classrooms to cater to different kinds of learning. Knowing the right approach in teaching will enable the teachers to connect to the diverse learners. An approach can be psychologically focused such as behaviorism or connectivism. Pag behaviorism naman, behaviorists believe that teachers need to provide reinforcement based on the behavior of the students. Any person, regardless of his or her background, can be trained to act in a particular manner given the right conditioning. Approach can also be based on older philosophies such as idealism, essentialism, progressivism, etc. These are some of the philosophies which could be useful in attaining outcomes-based education and in implementing flexible learning. These are Number 1. Behaviorism Behaviorism is a theory of learning which states all behaviors are learned through interaction with the environment through a process called conditioning. Thus, behavior is simply a response to environmental stimuli. According to Skinner, as cited in Lee and Lim in 2015, that reinforcement is a more effective way to persuade people to change their behavior. There are two types of reinforcement. These are positive reinforcement and negative reinforcement. Positive reinforcement. This involves adding something to increase response. Examples. Giving of applause to student after giving a correct answer. Or giving prize to students who top the midterm exam. By giving applause and prizes, the teacher hopes to increase the desired behavior. Negative reinforcement. This describes removing something in order to increase response. Example, canceling a quiz if students turn in all of their homework for a week. By canceling the quiz, the teacher hopes to increase the desired behavior, which is completing all of the homework. Many people confuse negative reinforcement with punishment in operant conditioning, but they are two very different mechanisms. Remember that reinforcement, even when it is negative, always increases a behavior. In contrast, punishment always decreases a behavior. In positive punishment, you add an undesirable stimulus to decrease a behavior. An example of positive punishment is scolding a student to get the students to stop texting in class. In this case, a stimulus, the reprimand, is added in order to decrease the behavior which is texting in class. In negative punishment, you remove a pleasant stimulus to decrease a behavior. For example, when a child misbehaves, a parent can take away a favorite toy. In this case, a stimulus, which is the toy, is removed in order to decrease the behavior. 
Number 2. Progressivism. This refers to the idea that education comes from the experience of the child. Progressivists believe that teachers should foster the development of the whole child through hands-on learning, experimentation, and play. The learner is a problem solver and thinker who makes meaning through his or her individual experience in the physical and cultural context. In this approach, teachers provide experiences so that students can learn by doing as postulated by John Dewey. Children should experience democracy in school to make them better citizens. Instead of having an all-knowing teacher standing up front and talking, the students themselves should be an active part of their education. If your approach is progressivism, you believe that people learn best from what they consider most relevant to their lives. In here, students should test ideas by active experimentation. In this approach also, you focus your lessons kung anong mahalaga para sa kanila na magamit nila sa labas ng classroom or magamit nila after graduation. With that, you center the lessons on the needs, experiences, interests, and abilities of students. Students solve problems in the classroom similar to those they will encounter in their everyday lives. In other words, you will not provide lessons in which di naman nila magamit pagka-graduate nila. Number 3. Cognitivism Cognitivism is a learning theory which deals with, in particular, how people perceive and remember information, solve problems, and ultimately learn. A key concept of cognitivism is that learning constructs mental maps in the brain and learning process is the means by which these mental structures are understood. Learners will be able to make more links with prior learning and be able to apply what they have learned. Therefore, instructional materials should be varied and include audiovisual examples, demonstrations, opportunities for practical application along with corrective feedback. The use of feedback to guide and support the learner in creating accurate mental connections is a key component of the cognitive theory. The use of technology can be used effectively by providing interest and variety, thereby aiding comprehension and the elaboration of existing cognitive structures. Cognitivism focuses on the mind and more specifically mental processes such as thinking, knowing, memory, and problem-solving with the goal of opening the black box of the human mind, the process of which is deemed valuable and necessary for learning to occur. The best way for a teacher to approach using cognitivism in the classroom is to ask questions to help students refine their thinking and recognize where they may be wrong. Some great examples of cognitivism in educational technology can be found in online games and reinforcement activities such as sorting games, puzzles, and flashcards. These games will often present prior knowledge schema in a different method. Thus, creating this equilibrium and a need to adapt and learn the new information in order to continue. For example, the online resource Quizlet creates a means of listing vocabulary, pictures, and even mathematical procedures, and then taking the list and producing several ways of practicing the previously known schemata, including the incorporation of audio and video. Number 4. Existentialism Existentialism is the philosophical belief we are each responsible for creating purpose or meaning in our own lives. The existentialists believe that each of us has the free will to develop as we see fit. The teacher's role is to help students define their own essence by exposing them to various paths they may take in life and creating an environment in which they may freely choose their own preferred way. For example, rather than emphasizing historical events, Existentialists focus upon the actions of historical individuals, each of whom provides possible models for the student's own behavior. Moreover, vocational education is regarded more as a means of teaching students about themselves and their potential than of earning a livelihood. In teaching art, existentialism encourages individual creativity and imagination more than copying and imitating established models. Number 5. Constructivism Constructivism is based on the idea that people actively construct or make their own knowledge and that reality is determined by your experiences as a learner. Students learn best when engaged in learning experiences rather possibly receiving information. Constructivism argues that you cannot directly impart this information. Only an experience can facilitate students to construct their own knowledge. Therefore, the goal of teaching is to design these experiences. Materials include primary sources of material and manipulative materials. In this approach, learning is interactive, building on what the student already knows. Students work primarily in groups. Once the students already learned reading, writing, arithmetic, and right conduct, and you believe that is already enough, then you are an essentialist. There are teachers who used only one approach, others two or more approaches, while some may make use of a combination of these. 
wala naman pong masama kasi ikaw ang teacher and you know what's best for your students and you know your limitations and alam mo kung hanggang saan ang kaya mong ibigay. Method. It is a practical realization of approach. It is procedural, a systematic way of doing something, and an orderly arrangement of steps. According to VS in 2019, the way or style of the presentation of content in a classroom is called teaching method. So how do we present the lesson? Was it an interactive lecture? Cooperative learning? Did you present it using a projector? Did you present it using visual aids? The selection of the teaching methods depends upon the nature of a task, learning outcomes, learners' abilities, and students' entering behavior. One example of a method is Total Physical Response or TPR. So if behaviorism ang approach mo in your method, you need to anchor your teaching on how to mold the behavior of the students. Like if they had done something good, so give rewards. If hindi naman, you need to correct their misbehavior. So if our approach in teaching is behaviorism, in which naniniwala tayo ng pinakamalaga ay ang kanilang pag-ugali, pagkilos, through total physical response or TPR method, Teachers gave reactions on what the students have done. If the students had done something good, let's say they had perfected the quiz or exam, we could give them a laudable applause, crediting thumbs up, or we might give them prizes. Yung mga ugali nila binibigyan natin ng reactions because behaviorists believe that in this way students will learn. Some teachers will give rewards or incentives. The following are some methods that are divided as to more teacher-directed such as lecture showing telling, worked examples, interactive lecture, flipped classroom, and Socratic questioning. Then more student-centered such as discussion-based, scenario-based, case-based, collaborative learning, inquiry-based, problem-based, and project-based. If constructivist ka in which you believe that students learn best when engaged in learning experiences rather passively receiving information, you will have the following methods. Reciprocal teaching learning. This allows pairs of students to teach each other. Inquiry-based learning or IPL. Learners pose their own questions and seek answers to their questions via research and direct observation. Problem-based learning or PBL, in which learners acquire knowledge by devising a solution to a problem. Then we have cooperative learning, in which students work together in small groups to maximize their own and each other's learning. Your choice of teaching method depends on what fits you. Your educational philosophy, like behaviorism, existentialism, pragmatism, cognitivism, etc. Classroom demographics, such as student socioeconomic status, age, gender, family structure, parent level of education, culture, technology usage, transients, race, spirituality, family traditions, their parents' education, community involvement, etc. The following are examples of teaching methods. 1. Lecture showing or telling. 2. Worked examples. 3. Interactive lecture. 4. Flipped classroom. 5. Socratic questioning. 6. Discussion-based learning. 7. Case-based learning. 8. Collaborative learning. 9. Inquiry-based learning. 10. Problem-based learning. And project-based learning. Teaching methods are chosen to accomplish specific outcomes. Methods are not universally more or less effective. They are more or less appropriate for the learning outcomes, the student needs, and different learning environment or modalities. We know it by experience that the method of presenting the lessons in teaching math is by far different in teaching English. This illustrates the approaches and the methods to be used in teaching English. The text which are highlighted in blue are the approaches, while those which are highlighted in red are the methods. In teaching language, these are the methods that you may utilize. 1. Direct method. 2. The grammar translation method. 3. The audiolingual method. 4. Total physical response or TPR. 5. Communicative language teaching. 6. The silent way. And 7. Suggestopedia language learning method. Technique. This is more specific than method. It is an ordered procedure. 
concrete strategy or trick designed to accomplish an immediate outcome. This refers to the teacher styles and tricks to accomplish an immediate outcome. If your approach is progressivism and your method is interactive lecture, your techniques involve short writing exercises, quick pairings or small group discussions, individual or collaborative problem solving, or drawing for understanding. You may utilize a collaborative learning method. In this approach and method, common classroom techniques for groups include think-pair-share, fishbowl debates, case studies, problem solving, and jigsaw. If your approach is cognitivism, you may utilize an inquiry-based learning. This scaffolding can be provided by the instructor through work scenarios, process worksheets, opportunities for learner reflection, and consultations with individuals or small groups. On the other hand, if your approach is behaviorism, you may utilize CLT or communicative language teaching method. Role play, interviews, group work, and opinion sharing are popular activities practiced in communicative language teaching, along with games like scavenger hunts and information gap exercises. There you have it, e-learners. These are the things that I wanted to share with you about approach, method, and technique. I hope you learned something from this video, and I hope meron na po kayo na feeling mga approaches, methods, and techniques na gagamitin nyo sa pagtuturo nyo in the new normal. If you are new in this channel, don't forget to like share and subscribe and if you don't want to miss out hit the notification bell for more upcoming videos till my next video happy learning